All right, good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Friday, May 20th. Happy birthday to someone. Um, okay, so I got a quote for you. All I'm right, Jill, I'm listening. On, on today's uh, episode, business episode with an amazing human being that I'm really fond of. Um, but this quote, it, this quote um, follows me during the years of my adult life. This is what Benjamin Franklin said. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Thank you, Gio. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Southeast. Good morning, North, Northeast, West Coast, Central Time. Good morning, wherever you are. Thank you for being here. Thank you for visiting the Daily Huddle. Thank you. Sorrel, we're almost at 1,500 followers, Sorrel. Oh, my God. And today's episode 560. Today's oh. episode 560. This is so great. Thank you for being here. Thank you for navigating the internet. We say over here that the way you start your day gives you the rest of the day. And the way that you live each day gives you the rest of your life. There's something powerful about what you do in the morning. And the best habit that you can have is to start your day with a daily huddle. All right, so let's get us all primed and all ready for the amazing Samantha today. Um, Sorrel, let me ask you a quick question, Sorrel. What time is it? Giovanni, the time is now. Isn't it? It's unescapable. <laughs> Stand the man. Good morning, sir. Where are you? I'm right here. I'm right now. In right. the daily huddle and in my skin. <laughs> You know, everywhere I go, everybody, you know, I can't help but to see myself here. It's kind of inescapable either. The time is now. I am always here. Let's see. Uh, Sorel, let me close up with this. Sorel, how are you? And one thing you're grateful for. Yeah. You know, I am the way I say I am. And I don't even have to pick the right word. And today I say I am phenomenal. I'm a phenomenon of the universe. Wherever I go, miracles abound. And I'm going to hug my son today. Thank you, Sorel. Sorel, must your sacrifice today to be financially free tomorrow? I don't know, but that's what Samantha is going to talk to us today. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Samantha Sorrell? Thank you for having Samantha uh, here. Uh, so, so amazing to have you here, Samantha, and so amazing to be creating a conversation inside of this question, must you sacrifice today to be financially free tomorrow? And that question, even though we're asking it in the context of financial freedom, I think it applies to freedom in general, because mostly people think, oh my God, I have to sacrifice my time with my family to be a successful business owner. I have to sacrifice my vacations to be someone who serves the community. We tend to live in this world of either or and never both. And I'm so delighted that you're here today, Samantha, to get us closer to both. So let me tell you guys a little bit about Samantha. If you're listening on Facebook, tune your ears in and hear this. Samantha has been working in the financial industry for over 15 years, helping people on a wide variety of clients in the corporate setting. She advised financial institutions on managing consumer credit, behavior, and strategy. Now, in the private sector, 
She is driven to show individuals, families, and business owners how to achieve financial success. Samantha is a wealth advisor and someone who's lived her life by the words she will utter today inside of this question. Must you sacrifice today to be financially free tomorrow? Samantha, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Welcome back to the Daily Huddle. And tell me, start by telling us a little bit about how you bumped into this question and why this question for you, Samantha? Right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Sorel. Good morning, Giovanni, and everyone that's listening. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, and, and even a journey. And I, I absolutely love your quote, Giovanni. And I know in life, there are no mistakes. So however you picked that, uh, that quote today is perfect because it talks about investing in ourselves. You know, when we hear the word invest, most people think about, you know, the stock market, real estate. But reality is the number one investment is in ourselves that we need to take, right? So why am I bringing this up? Because the reason I am here today is because of the, all the investments that I've taken in myself. I remember when you first started the Daily Huddle, um, you know, two years ago, and you had a dear friend of mine and business partner on, right? Do you remember Mr. that? Janine was yes. here. Yes, <laughs> and I remember I was a guest, I was listening in, and I thought, oh my gosh, that, how, do, how, do you, how do you do that, Janine? I mean, the courage it takes to get on the daily huddle and the talk and answer questions. And, and I just thought, oh my gosh. And so over the years, you know, these last two years, one of the main things I've done is to invest more in myself, find the courage to do things that are scary to me. Cause obviously this is not scary to a lot of people. To me, it was very scary. Um, so going, going back to that is I remember we saw each other a few months ago and I, I saw you both at that beautiful event you had. And remember I told you, sir, I was like, I have desire, this desire, it's time. It's time to, to have the courage to show up here and, and, and speak because um, uh, it is important to me. All of this is so important. Um, I've, I've lived my life with this principle right and um that life it's it's not we don't we're not living a life of oars i either do this or i do that life is meant to be lived with ants um and if you actually go look at my facebook it's funny because i talk about a life of ants all the time so how do we come up with this you know with this question is because we're so um brainwashed right or led to believe from a young age that everything takes hard work and sacrifice, right? We have to, um, like you said, sacrifice time to be able to have a career, right? We have to sacrifice our present, right? We can't go out to eat. We can't have the, you know, the lattes and we can't go on vacation. We can't do all the things because we're trying to save for, for the future. Uh, and then another one that it's funny popped up to me was we have to sacrifice ourselves to have a successful marriage. You know, you have to let the other person win or, you know, is, but is it really a sacrifice? So this is where I, 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 I'm going to turn the question for everybody to think about. Um, are all these things really a sacrifice, right? Having a happy marriage, you know, so being able to learn to navigate, you know, living with another person, growing with another person, growing a family, you become a better person. Is that really a sacrifice? right? Um, most people would probably say no, right? Because happiness is in the home. Um, so that's why I thought, let's, let's talk about that because. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, uh, while we were sitting here bantering around uh, before the show started, you said, this question is really important to me and it's really special to me. Can you say a little more about that? Right. What makes it so special? Um, it makes it special because, as I mentioned, I've lived my life like that, right? So it wasn't a question of, you know, is there a way of doing it a special way? Is there, Samantha, tell us what the trick is. Um, the really, the, the, the question is, the only wrong answer is not doing something, right? That's always a wrong answer. You know, like me staying away from not doing the daily huddle because I was scared to get up here, right? That is the only wrong answer is not doing it. 
you know, coming on here um, is the right answer, whichever way it goes, right? So uh, why is it special to me? Um, because I've lived it, I've done it, and I've shown my clients how to do it, okay? And it's a beautiful way to live. So how do we do that, right? Well, pause for a second. You say you've lived it, you've done it, and you've shown your clients how to do it. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think this applies to anything, whether you're building business, whether you're looking to have a great marriage. So in terms of living it, having done it, could you give us a little snippet of where you were when you started and get into the how you applied all of that and where are you now? Make it real for us. Okay, perfect. So where did it start? For me personally, it started at a young age when I started working, right? So the idea was, okay, I went from not working to working. So I've had more money than I ever thought I could ever have. Right. So, so my first, uh, my first thought was, and so this is where, you know, I, I allowed myself to dream and allow myself to have my, my, um, let's, let's say on me, my self dream. What do I want out of life? What are, what are my, what are the, what are my goals? Ultimately, what do I want to achieve? What's important to me? And what are the things that bring me joy now? Right. Cause a lot of times we get lost into well, I want this and I want to buy that and I want to this and I want to do this. But of those things, which ones are the ones that really bring you joy? Because you'll see it at the end, not everything is bringing you joy. So you're really just throwing, in this case, money out the window. But what, is, what, is my, what was my ultimate goal? Um, I knew some of the things that I wanted. Some of them were short term. I mean, I wanted to have a great career for a time. And I knew I also wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. That was my dream. Right. So I knew plotting things out, you know, I wanted to have a great career for a while and then stay at home. I wanted ultimately to be able to have financial peace. Right. It wasn't about a fancy car, fancy homes. It was just freedom. Um, so then once I had the idea of, OK, what did I want? Right. And then fortunately enough, I matched up with somebody who wanted the same, you know, the same goal. So that was really important. But uh, so that helped. But really is to have what is your goal? What is your ultimate goal all along the way? Right. And once you have that goal and you know with all of your might and all your certainty, that's what you want to achieve. You have locked in the most important component of this, which is your commitment. Right, because you've eliminated all the things that don't bring you joy and you've kept the things, your, your targets, what you, want, what you want out of life. So that's key, number one. What do you want and what brings you joy? What do you want and what brings you joy? And as you, as you discover that and you make the commitment to it, are there specific steps that you follow, milestones that you create? How do you gauge progress and how do you stay on track? Right. So the first thing is that is to do it, right? Whatever that is, okay? So you have the idea you're going to commit to something and then you have to have a plan. Obviously, depending on what it is, if it's a financial, if, you know, staying on the financial piece, you have to have a plan. You have to know, okay, what, what are you trying to achieve? You know, short term, I wanted to be shorter term. I wanted to, because I still ended up working, you know, almost 10 years in the corporate sector. Hmm. Um, I knew I wanted to stay home. Um, so the idea was, well, how do we stay on one income? How do we live on one income? And we start practicing that piece. So then as you have a plan and then you set up, you know, well, how do you achieve that? Now, most people would say, well, that's a huge sacrifice, right? But was it, right? Because um, we had just decided that was what we wanted to do. So the, the, the road to get there wasn't a sacrifice, but still. Let's break it out. Um, step one, right? When we look at our, our bills, we know we must pay certain things, all our, you know, our rent, our mortgage, all our utilities. That item just becomes your number one item, right? You have to make space room for your dream. Um, and that's really in all practicality, that's how you start. You start with the commitment. You have the plan, you, you really laser focus with the plan. 
And really the implementation piece of it is that you make that piece just as important as everything else, just like a mortgage. You're not questioning whether you're paying your mortgage or not. Hmm. You're not thinking of a mortgage as a sacrifice, are you? Are you, Soro? Is no. your mortgage a sacrifice? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, if, I'm, if I'm hearing you correctly, it's, it's almost as if one could say, there's never such a thing as a sacrifice. There's perhaps being unclear about what you really want. Right. But once you're clear about what you want, what you're saying is that the steps to getting there are right there in front of you. And all you have to do is take those actions consistent with having what you want. Like you wanted to stay home. Well, you stayed home and then made it all work inside of what you already had. Now, a lot of people who are listening to you may say, well, gosh, you know, Samantha, that's all well and good. And you actually said in the beginning question, must I sacrifice today to be financially free tomorrow? Well, if you stayed at home and you lived in one income, people may be thinking, well, gosh, you know, that's just one income. Mm -hmm. Did you actually sacrifice tomorrow then? Or are you financially free? Is it possible to really achieve both? Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, the so the, let's you know let's let's focus on that. And I, I love that you you clarified once you have, you know, you know, you've clarified what your goal is and your commitment is there whatever happens along the way is not a sacrifice. It's just a matter of reorganizing your priorities, right? You know, um, like in my example, the, the staying at home first and then eventually achieving financial freedom. And again, financial freedom being whatever it, you know, everybody has a different definition of it and everybody has a different, you know, different desire. But once you've identified that and you've created a plan and you have stuck to the consistency of it, um, you, you, you continue to live with those principles and nothing ever really changes. So um, going back to your question, yes, you do achieve both. You can achieve both um, mm -hmm. because you continue along the path. And then as, as things move on, like, for example, I'll use me as an example, staying at home, living on one income, we've already had done it. So we knew. So in the meantime, while we were making two incomes in our example, we were saving one of the incomes right so we were building this nest egg and you know investing it and doing all the right things with it so that as as the kids got older you know we had access to money that we could use for the things that we wanted to do as a family and then in the meantime you know continue to grow it and grow it now what came along the way which is going back to giovanni's um point I could, you know, we continued to invest in ourselves. So our skills became, you know, um, better, quote unquote, better. The income increased. The, you know, eventually, as, as you know, my story, you know, when my kids got to high school, I, I had a desire to show people how I had lived and how I had helped other people achieve, you know, the, the how to be on the road to a better financial future. Um, so I invest, continue to invest in myself and then eventually, you know, open my own business. So with it, you know, there's the, there's the commitment, there's the plan, there's the consistency, there's the perseverance, there's the investment in yourselves. And then there's the flexibility of, of allowing life to evolve and, and take you further. Um, so does that answer your question? Well, you know, the other thing I'm hearing, Samantha, uh, one, you define the goal. You get to define that, you choose that. The other thing I'm hearing is you also get to choose what financial freedom is to you. Exactly. So uh, before we open it up for questions and comments from the rest, uh, from the people here and from Facebook, tell me, what is your personal, for you and your family, what is your personal definition of financial freedom? And what does it look like to be living that life right now? Um, I will say it for me, I had, it has always been, always has been um, peace of mind, knowing that no matter the, the, 
whatever happens in life, in no matter what obstacles, what challenges, we would always be okay. That was to me the most important thing. And then everything else um, that came with it was a plus. I would, you know, I remember thinking, no matter what, nobody will be able to come and take this house. No matter what, we would be okay. Whatever happens in the world, pandemic, loss of a job, we would be okay because we took care of all of our steps. Obviously, there's more, you know, there's more things when you set up a financial plan. But the idea is really, is really this. Decide what it is for you. Because for many people, staying at home is not a desire, right? For many people, it is to have a fulfilling career. But the last thing you want to do is having had a fulfilling career and then have nothing left to show for it. So the idea of, of being able to have a plan for the future, because again, you know, we're talking short term, but obviously the plan is also, you know, have a, you know, as I, as I, as we, we were talking, I'm getting ready, we're getting ready to be in empty nesters. So we, and we're young, we have a life ahead of us, right? So the goal then is like, okay, what do we, we've already had planned out, what are we, what is going to happen afterwards? Um, so with that, what I wanted to say too, is that everybody has their idea of what, what their financial freedom is and that no amount, it dictates that. So you know, you want to come, you know, uh, so the, one of the ideas of having this conversation was um, most people don't want to do it because they feel like it's a sacrifice. But, you know, if I told you $50 a month, $100 a month, $200 a month is all you really needed to create your freedom, because your freedom might not be, you know, $10 million in a bank, you know, your freedom might be lower. That is still going to give you freedom. So it's really knowing that you have the flexibility of creating what you want with what you have and then evolving over time. The number one component is that commitment and that clarity of knowing what you want because then nothing becomes a sacrifice. Everything becomes an opportunity. You're muted. Let's bring Giovanni in. And uh, Giovanni, what do you want to say and what do you want to create inside of this context before we open it up for questions? Well, maybe we already opened it up for questions and comments. Right. Um, the one of the things I hear that I really, I really like the possibility of it for me, it's um, when Samantha, when you were saying, uh, maybe success for us. Well, maybe you didn't say maybe, right? But what I heard was success for us is peace of mind, and everything else is a plus. And I and I think that. Um, in having a prior, having success be defined that way really uh, gave me uh, an opportunity to redefine what success is for me or, uh, or uh, redefine a, goal, a financial goal to be success. Because um, I'm, what I was doing was kind of putting together in my mind that, well, in some degree, in order to have financial independence, if you will, or have a particular goal, financial goal, it does require moving things around. Um, otherwise, I'll, I'll just spend all of it today, right? right. However, if, if peace of mind is my goal, then saving is part of it because I want peace of mind. If peace of mind is going on vacation because you know we haven't been on vacation as a family and we are in some degree on a stress emotional state and we need that space that a vacation does it's part of the peace of mind and so it's not a sacrifice either it's peace of mind is the goal and by really getting connected what does bring me peace of mind what does bring my family peace of mind then everything else is not a sacrifice. It's just what brings us peace of mind, whether it's short term or whether it's long term. That's what I was hearing in today's conversation. And I thought it was really great. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you. Brilliant. Questions, comments from anyone? And if not, 
there are some key ingredients, Samantha, that are just essential. Uh, first, there's the commitment. Then there's the goal, as Giovanni's pointing to, peace of mind. What would you say are the non-negotiable ingredients beyond those two? Not doing it. Not doing anything because you think you don't have enough. Most people don't achieve their financial goals because they don't start or they wait a long time. And the number one reason they don't start is because they don't never think they have enough. Um, so what I tell people is that no matter, you know, everybody has different goals, but um, you look at the, you know, it's funny because I just read yesterday, Vanguard just did a study. The average person that's approaching retirement has about $85,000 for retirement. What if you started with $50 a month and you had 150 when you got to retirement? That's already more than almost twice what the average American has. Yes, you're not fully free, but you have a nice little safety net. So the non-negotiables is not doing anything. Absolutely non-negotiable. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there is a, Soro, you know what I hear? Yeah. There is so much uh, in the context. I don't know. I don't know, but this is what's showing up for me. This is what's coming up for me. There is so much emotional maturity um, to, to have, to um, have a solid, if you will, uh, financial future it's what i'm hearing from today it's like emotional maturity and um and i think it comes to it comes i don't know i'm just saying this what i'm hearing from from samantha it comes down to a mixture between doing it a mixture between trusting something else a mixture between investing in yourself and have something else be your priority, my priority, than just a goal to achieve. That's what I'm hearing from today. And the other key piece is uh, not only is it possible, as Samantha is saying, it's actually your job. You know, I'm hearing it without making anything wrong at all. Uh, the, the, the piece that I'm hearing is that it's probably unethical and unbecoming of anyone to not do that. Like that's the piece you were saying. It's not negotiable not to start. It's not negotiable not to do it. So whatever that goal is and whatever your definition of financial independent is, uh, start now and keep at it. Right. Because oh. what's on the other side of that is just so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And you're enjoying that now. Yes. But I've enjoyed it all along. And that's the beauty that's of it. The key, right. That's the key. It, that's it's, the key. it's knowing what you really want. You know, it's sort of like if you're, if you're in a competition, right, you want to be um, in the Super Bowl, right? And you're, I mean, those guys are training. And to us, it looks like, oh my gosh, I could never do that. But they do it because that's what they want. And not once do you think they think it's a sacrifice, right? Mm. So it's just approach life the same way. If this is important to you, just make room for it, just like you would everything else. And it's yeah. not a sacrifice because you're, you're ultimately creating your, the beautiful life that you want. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being on the Daily Huddle. It was I phenomenal. It. <laughs> we want more of you. We want you back. And uh, uh, we always end the show on this note with a little twist today. When you take care of tomorrow with the mindset that you don't have to sacrifice today to do that, you end up creating the space where you do not have to quote unquote sacrifice anything. You don't have to sacrifice loving. 
yourself and others. You don't have to sacrifice being stressed out of your mind because you think being stressed is what it takes. You don't have to be on the run eating while you're driving, whether it's a burger or whatever, you can actually create the space where you say, my health is important to me and you eat mostly plant-based. You don't have to sacrifice anything, not even sleep. You don't have to sacrifice not giving because you think giving would actually take away from what you're building. And last but not least, you just create the time where you can leisurely be on the move, walking, running, dancing, and living life to the fullest. Not only can you stay healthy and not sacrifice today, but you can be financially independent as a business owner without sacrificing today. My name is Sorel Kitan. I'm the co-founder of The Daily Huddle. My business partner and co-founder is Giovanni Gonzalez. We bring you along with, uh, um, along with our co-hosts, The Daily Huddle every weekday, Monday through Friday. So have a phenomenal weekend and join us here for Money Matters, Monday morning. Until then. Thank you so much.